Hey everybody, Chris Farad here. Welcome back to Siberia. This odd little adventure that we're on. And it looks like we're about to leave this university. And uh, I gotta head to the train, wind it up. Hopefully we don't run into any hiccups with that. But it is possible, you never know. And take off. We did pick up some notes from... Um, the paleontologist lecture that talk a little bit more about the mammoths and these uh, yukuls, I think they're called. I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. They're kind of like this mysterious culture, but... Oh, did I go the wrong way? Yeah, I did. Uh, there's like this mysterious culture that... I'm not really understanding if they still survive, but... He thinks that there could still be mammoths around. Which is like... Would be kind of weird. But we know that Hans was obsessed with mammoths, and so we know what that means. He is on the hunt. And we've had a lot, like, if you think about what we had to do in this university. So we came in here with our train, it was broken down, right? We had to figure out how we're going to get the train to move. So we found this couple who said they'd move our train, but they need $100. Then to get that hundred dollars, we had to talk to the administration of the school and they wanted us to repair their uh, grandstand thing. To repair the grandstand, we needed this egg which was above the train. Uh, you had to take a ladder to get above it. But the ladder was blocked by birds. To get the birds, we had to get these berries. And to get the berries, we had to talk to a whole bunch of different people about their little alcohol racketeering that they have going on. Eventually we got the berries, we got all that stuff and it, and it worked out. But, pretty crazy. <laughs> like, pretty nutty. Okay, now, can I cross here? That's the question. Yes, I can. Because the little mechanism is over on this side. go. Why don't we just wind it a little bit extra this time so we don't run out anywhere else, hmm? Probably a pretty good plan. Who the hell is this now? Hello? Where are you? <laughs> Hi, Dan. <laughs> I'm in Bergstadt. What? Is that a town? I hope the man you're looking for lives there. Are you coming home soon? From what I gather, it's one huge university with an extraordinary station aviary. If you could only see it, there are trees and birds everywhere. It's so weird here. Sounds like a great place for a bit of sightseeing. So, are you coming back soon? I don't think so. In fact, the train I'm traveling on has some kind of a mechanical problem. We've been forced to stop here. Us? I thought you were alone. Who's with you? Oscar, the train engineer. You're messing around with mechanics now, are you? Don't be so stupid, Dan, please. Oscar is an automaton created by Mr. Varlberg, the man I'm looking for. And he's not any old robot. He's a sophisticated butler type, if you see what I mean. He's a bit obsessive as well. Kate, I don't know what they're feeding you in Europe, but don't you think it's time that you came home? But my mission still isn't finished. To hell with your mission. I don't know why you accepted it in the first place. If you just stuck to the middle of the road, then we wouldn't be in this mess. We? If there's any mess, it's me who's in it. And while I'm trying to come to grips with strange towns, you, my darling, are sitting at home on your butt. I seem to remember we had nothing against my departure. It was only going to be two or three days, Kate. Please, try to put yourself in my shoes. Put yourself in my your shoes? Your shoes. Not only do I have to fit myself into your diary, but I've got to get myself into your shoes as well. Is there anywhere else Sir would like me to put myself while we're on this subject? Look, I don't want to talk about it now. Call me back when you've calmed down. I was perfectly calm before I picked up your call. I only wanted a few words of encouragement, not your disdain. Was that too much to ask? You can be such a selfish... Whoa. Takes one to know one, sweetheart. Okay, things are getting a little bit rocky with Danny Boy. 
A little bit rocky. I mean, I can understand both sides, though. I can understand Dan, because he's like, listen, you're on the other side of the frickin' world. And you keep saying that, oh, you know, things are happening. And I'm not giving him a lot of details. And it, But at the same time, she's just kind of like, she, she wants this to be done just as anyone else does. And, uh, you know, I can kind of understand where she's coming from, too. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Well, let's get going. Speaking of mechanical problems, there aren't any other hitches I should know about, Oscar? This train has no mechanical problems, Kate Walker. Winding the spring mechanism is standard service procedure. Okay, okay, Oscar. Don't get all touchy about it. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. That's it, Oscar. We can go. Kate Walker, I must remind you of one of the journey regulations. All objects featured oh, in the train's right. inventory must be replaced before departure. I don't understand. Something is missing, Kate Walker. Oh my god, the mammoth doll. Yep. Please return it to its allocated position, Kate Walker. So that, I guess, I'm is in off, place. I'm off, Oscar. See you later. Yes, Kate Walker. That's probably in place so that if we would have ignored the, uh, the paleontologist's call earlier, uh, we wouldn't be able to leave, so we'd have to go and see that presentation that he gave to us. There we go. It's a really interesting requirement for the train, though. Still don't really quite understand that, but perhaps we'll find out one day. Everything okay? Yes, Kate Walker. I am waiting to continue our journey. Let's rock. Oscar? If you tell me one more time something's missing, I'll... Everything is ready. Take your seat, Kate Walker. We are leaving. I'll... Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Just ready to be so frustrated with him. Gate just gonna open? How does that work? Uh. No point weighing myself down. Okay, well, you never know. I always remember that we got this suitcase that we've been carrying forever with. Apparently no use, because we don't change our clothes, and we don't need anything from it, so... Uh, let's get off this side. see much going on here. I'll have to go off the other side, I guess. Okay, we've got a little station here. Let's check this out. Oh, it's going to be him again, isn't it? What are you doing there, Oscar? <laughs> it is imperative that we comply oh, with railroad Jesus. and customs regulations, Kate Walker. <laughs> Oscar, don't you think we could drop the trifling details once and for all? No, not possible. We need an exit visa to get beyond the wall, Kate Walker. <sighs> and you wouldn't know where I could get one of them from, would you? There is usually some form of authority stationed at a guard post that is strategically positioned to issue such a visa. <laughs> Can you help me with that? I don't suppose you can help me get this visa, then? Your non-supposition is correct, Kate Walker. Oh, what? Oscar, don't you think we've wasted enough time already? 
You neglected to find the clockwork winding mechanism for the train with sufficient haste, Kate Walker. What nerve! And you refused to lend a helping hand. Help that could have been invaluable to me. I agree, Kate Walker. If you weren't so obsessed by procedure, we wouldn't have had a hitch. I am not entirely convinced, Kate Walker. Oscar, please, let's get in the train and leave, can we? Yes, Kate Walker. Give me the visa. What? Okay, see you later, Oscar. Yes, Kate Walker. All right, let's see if we can go around here. No point, hmm. it's locked. Interesting. Well, where are we gonna go now? What about this door? Oh, there we've got action. Okay, let's take some mystery stairs, why don't we? Oh yeah, probably Dan again. Pissed. Hello? Kate! Oh, oh is no. that you? What's going on? Well, I finally got the mechanical train wound, and I hope it's going to take me to Hans Varlberg. I had to sort things out with a couple of weirdo sailors, and they probably ripped me off. But now I'm blocked behind this massive wall. You should see it. It's huge. I'm not talking about that. I want to know what's going on with Dan. What do you mean? I bumped into him at Maggie's Do, and he said you'd argue. That's a bit over the top. Things got a bit heated the last time we called, that's all. It's like no two need seconds to go ago. Overboard. I don't mean to be Miss Melodramatic, but he didn't seem in such great shape. He had his down in the dumps head on. <laughs> like Dan has a down in the dumps head. Well, yeah, when that shock of hair flops over his forehead <laughs> and his eyes mist up and his oh, eyebrows kind of awesome. creased together. <laughs> I'd never noticed. Maybe I did go a bit too far, but he's got such a goody two-shoes image of me that sometimes I just lose it. And this case is taking up a lot of headspace. I was just looking for a bit of compassion. Well, you sure got mine. So, what's going down? Like I said before, I'm kind of getting somewhere, but it's slow. This Hans Vorlberg guy is getting more and more fascinating by the day. Okay, well, anyway, it doesn't sound like you're bored. Not like back here in the office. Every day is boredom day. Just no fun without you. When are you coming back? Shouldn't be long, I hope. Look, I've got to go. See you soon. Well, call us again real soon. And be easier on Dan next time, huh? I'll try. Okay, Dan's pretty pissed. Not really a surprise. No, no point. dice on the it's gate. Locked. Check this side. Oh, what is this? Please be open. Thank you. Oh, we got a guy in here. Good day to you, sir. Captain Melatesta. Commander-in-Chief of the Barikstad Border Post at your service, madam. Oh, maybe he can hook me up. Is the person who takes care of the gate anywhere around? There is no person who takes care of the gate. Believe you me, ma'am. I have been the one and only guardian of this gate since 1968. That year I took over the position from the late Lieutenant Colonel Malatesta, my own father. In wow. that case... Can you tell me how the mechanism works? It sure looks complicated to me. Not at all. It is child's play for anyone who takes the time to work out its surprisingly straightforward logic. And from the looks of your locomotive, it shouldn't pose you any problems. Why do you say that? When I caught sight of your formidable locomotive, I immediately said, heavens, only Hans oh, Vorlberg cool. could design such an engine. And I know what I'm talking about, ma'am because he invented the gate's original mechanism. 
It was his last creation here in Bargstadt. So you know Hans Varlberg? No, I mean, not personally. I was only a baby when he stayed in Barkstad. My father spoke often of him, and I knew about his inventions. He left very many things behind him. I know. In any case, I noticed that his fantastic knack for inventing has not deteriorated with age. Uh, how's he doing? I don't know. In fact, I don't actually know him. I'm searching for him. An inheritance matter. I hope his train is going to lead me to him. And why not? His inventions are always full of surprises. That I've noticed. Between the station aviary and this bleak wall, the change in atmosphere is radical, don't you think? It's been a long time since I've been at liberty to judge, miss. My duties forbid me from abandoning my oh, post. Oh, so he like stays here full time. I need a visa to cross the wall and to continue my journey to the east. They told me that you are the only person in a position to issue such a visa. Indeed. This responsibility is part of my duties. However, I am not currently issuing visas because nobody must venture beyond the wall. And why not? It's far too dangerous, in particular for a lady of your standing who is traveling unescorted. Dangerous? What exactly do you mean, Captain? The enemy, miss. The enemy. I've been observing them for several years through my telescope. There's one particular horseman stationed yonder. He's a scout from the invading enemy army, and he's been spying on us. So I have to be extremely vigilant. He knows that I know he's there, you understand? And as long as I keep my eye on him, he won't dare try anything. Are you sure? Please. Take a look for yourself. What? Okay, let's take Don't a look. Don't mind me if I retire, Captain. Please, madam. My respects. Okay. So he's keeping an eye on this enemy. I don't know what he's talking about. How strange. I can't see a Cossack horseman at all. There's just a dead tree in the middle of an empty plain. Oh. That poor captain must have really bad eyesight. Oh, wait a second. Okay, so I have an idea here. Let's check out what else is around. There was that thing about the mushrooms that um, improved like vision or whatever for those warriors. And I wonder... Oh, look at this. Look. Broken glasses. Yeah. If they belong to the captain, then he sure has eye problems going by those lenses. And we've got wine glasses here, so I bet you... Let's check this out. If I am to use this Yangala Cola powder in one of these glasses... And then wine... Colonel, sir. If I get him to drink it, and then he can see Captain. what he's looking at. But you have the air of a great officer. Uh, you flatter me, miss. Unfortunately, I am afraid that we frontier soldiers are often forgotten by the military administration. Ah, oh, there's no justice. I sympathize with you, Captain. Let us forget our worries for a moment and have a little drink together in the name of friendship. Uh, it would be my pleasure, miss, but the regulations strictly forbid it. Come on. A little glass of wine never hurt anybody, and nobody need know. Wine, miss? You are putting me in a very delicate situation. Don't deny yourself, Captain. Just a little glass. I assure you, it is excellent. Well, perhaps just a drop. Just a drop is right. Improve his eyesight for I don't know how long, but... Here's your glass. To your good health, of. Captain. Seems to have worked. And to yours, miss. <laughs> uh... Okay, good. I was like, what if he just dies? Mm. 
it's been a long time since I've drunk wine in such pleasant company. I admit, it is excellent. Isn't it? You wouldn't think it came from Barakstadt. It is made from the Amazon Forest Sauvignon grape that has been miraculously conserved and cultivated in the station garden. Well, well, well. The university authorities kept that one to themselves. Ah, they sure did. You know, Captain, it is essential that I continue my journey eastwards. Please, don't even think about it. As I've said, it's extremely dangerous. The enemy is spying on us. Yeah. Perhaps your Cossack horseman isn't quite what you thought. Perhaps it's just a dead tree twisted into a strange shape. You should take another look. You never know. Go on, Captain. Give it a try. <laughs> so be it. That's too funny. I will make this concession to the fairer sex, miss. But it does seem to be quite ridiculous. We'll see there, Mr. Whiny Pants. We'll see. <laughs> Incredible. How is this possible? By what strange magic? How could I have been so wrong for so long? The enemy was only a tree. <laughs> what the hell? I'm so ashamed. It's not that bad, Captain. It's only human to make mistakes, after all. A tree? Nothing but a dead tree. You think your enemy just doesn't move? Pull yourself move? together, Captain. It's okay. And now I suppose there's nothing stopping you from issuing me a visa? Yes, of course. There is no more danger. All these years. And now the Cossack has gone. There is nothing left to watch. Captain, you should be delighted. From now on, you don't have to stay pinned to your watchtower. Travel can start up again normally. You will be able to resume your regular duties, like issuing entrance and exit visas. You are right. I will sign you a visa to cross the wall frontier immediately. A thousand apologies. Here, miss. There we go. That worked out pretty nicely. Perfect. Thank you, Captain. And keep your eyes open. <laughs> <sighs> miss. If we could keep this between ourselves, please. For the sake of my honor, you understand? You have my promise, Captain. Okay. Well, I think we're good to go now. We've got the visa. Maybe he should get his glasses fixed? I don't know. I feel kind of bad for the guy. Watching this enemy spying on him for so long. This <laughs> tree. <laughs> what? Oh, that's too funny. Well, let's go hand it in. Oscar's going to be pretty happy. Here is the visa. I hope it's regulation, my dear Oscar. It is regulation. Here is your ticket. It's interesting, this little relationship between the automaton and Kate. We're departing from Berkstadt. Have a good journey, Kate Walker. So, can we go now? Indeed. We are already very late, Kate Walker. Oh, you don't say. <sighs> you don't say. See, I thought it was going to be as simple as just driving up here and taking off, but no, this giant wall had to be in the way. Obviously, there's something out there, and, and somebody had made reference to it. I think it might have been the paleontologist guy. 
who was like, oh, we don't go out there. Or maybe it was the administrators. Hmm. Your ticket, please, Kate Walker. Oh, yeah, forgot. Here you go, Oscar. Thank you, Kate Walker. Now, please return to your seat, Kate Walker. Yes, Oscar. Immediately, Oscar. Here we go. Where are we going to go next? Man, these, honestly, these cutscenes for how old this game is are freaking unreal. Better than a lot of current games. Okay, I don't know where we are. It's creepy. I don't know if we stopped voluntarily or if we ran out of juice again, but we'll find out tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm really, I'm having a lot of fun. This is completely different from anything I've ever played. Uh, but like, it's, I'm having a super time anyways. So we'll talk to you guys later, specifically tomorrow. Okay, bye.